Hi, this is a conversation with Kerry Halford T. Hardy. And Kerry is consultant and lecturer. And uh, your experience, Kerry, is in Europe. And uh, are, is the young crowd in Europe optimistic or pessimistic about the future? Uh, I think they're extremely pessimistic, at least in France. Um, you know, I live in France, so that's where my most of my contact is. However, it's a pessimism which in France transforms into something we call declinism, where they don't believe in the possibility of development, of human capacity to overcome struggles and problems. And it colors the way in which they see um, obstacles. Rather than looking at uh, how people can innovate and dream and work to overcome problems, they believe that the situation is simply, it makes it better to, um, to consume less, to do less, to reach back to a, a sort of golden past that never existed. Um, and this is also somewhat uh, tempered by the way that the, the government approaches these questions. We had uh, an agriculture minister two or three times ago who said, well, you need to return to the agricultural practices of your ancestors. Well, that also left them, you know, with broken backs and dead while they were young and not producing enough food to feed people. And instead of looking at the question of producing enough food to feed people, they said, well, there should simply be less people. Now, that pessimism, I think, is something that is shaped a bit by the culture and by the discourse that they hear around them. And principally, because of the European tendency towards the precautionary principle, they look at danger and conflate it with risk, and they don't look instead on how we can manage risk and how we can find opportunities to come over them. And now, fortunately, that's just a general observation. There are, of course, young, very interesting and very uh, um, future optimist uh, young people and students and entrepreneurs as well. But a large proportion of them also tend to leave the country. They look for other opportunities in other places. Used to be they would go to London, of course, after Brexit, well, now less so. Um, but I, I, I think. We need to change the rhetoric that we use with, with, with young people to talk about opportunity and to talk more about the excitement of overcoming challenges and to look and to focus less on the problems because they're going to see the problems anyway. So. I, I remember uh, graffiti from 1968. Well, I don't actually remember it, <laughs> but <laughs> it said something like, die young and leave a beautiful corpse. Yes. That's big. Well, what's interesting now for me is to look at the differences in optimism or the differences in, in opportunity that you see between various countries. Um, when you look at young people in Poland today, the change in mentality in Poland between, let's say, 1989 and now, um, it's it's become quite dynamic in Poland. Um, their economy is actually growing pretty well. I'm not saying they don't have other problems. I'm just talking specifically on that narrow subject. Um, and I think also when you look at um, the development in um, uh, some of the other former, uh, uh, I don't want to say former Soviet countries because that unfairly characterizes them, but in countries that previously did not have the same amount of economic opportunity. And because there's a greater possibility to grow, there are there's also nice handfuls of young people in those countries who can communicate the enthusiasm for you know, improving their lives and for finding small and, and uh, but personally important ways to, to be entrepreneurs and to make choices that improve their own lives. And I, I think that, that encouraging that kind of risk taking is, uh, it's it's very important. Is it possible to identify the sources of this pessimism? Well, uh, in French culture, it's quite deep. Um, 
and I really do think that it's a question of uh, risk tolerance. Uh, that's uh, certainly a, a major part of it. it you know, in, in, in the European Union, a lot is based on the precautionary principle, as I mentioned previously. And when you have the precautionary principle that causes you to focus on what can go wrong, rather than looking uh, maybe in a more balanced way, how do we create uh, regulatory sandboxes to be able to, to find interesting ways to, to deal with subjects. We came up with the REACH initiative, which said you have to test all kinds of chemical products to see if they can cause problems, even if they've been used for 50 years before without a problem. And then you have um, GDPR, which is uh, the general directive on, on privacy, which means that making data sharing uh, is very difficult. There's historical reasons for that uh, in, in Europe, of course, especially with Germany. But by focusing on, it's like focusing on flaws in a face rather than looking at the, at the whole and thinking that that person is beautiful and maybe quirky. We're saying, okay, well, yeah, but you know, their, their teeth are a little crooked. And I think that's, that colors the way that people look at, uh, at um, pessimism and optimism. And I also have to say, I think it also means that when you look at a 24-hour news cycle and constant social media, where you're hearing everything's going badly, um, your standard of living is going down, um, and in any case, well, the world is going to end because we have, you know, we have um, climate problems, and well, there's going to be energy scarcity, and well, we're not going to have enough food to feed everybody, and you're probably going to die from a pandemic. When all you hear is this constant barrage of negativity, you have to counter that in some way in order to create enough energy and positive emotion to want to you know, put yourself out there to become an entrepreneur and to, to look at solutions rather than just how you're going to manage your decline. Any advice on where to find these inspiration? Oh, well, there's, there are places to find them. And then first of all, one is, is simply to, to, I think, to find time to turn off the negativity. And that means that you find, uh, I have a, a, a group that I communicate with of young people who um, we share articles and, uh, and ideas and occasionally get together to talk about future optimism so that we can you know, find reasons to be optimistic and look at interesting solutions to problems. That's one. And then the second thing is, is, um, is I think, um, it's to look at the policy environment that um, you have media that maybe communicates some things that are more positive. There are, there are um, it's diversity in, in, uh, in, um, and also in entertainment. It's funny, but I think kids who watch, who play video games and who read uh, manga are probably more uh, positive and more optimistic than the ones who sit and, 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 and uh, simply digest, uh, you know, Twitter. Where can young Guatemalans find you? <laughs> in Paris. In no Paris. social media? Yeah, they can find me in social media. Um, but, you know, I think uh, the best place they can also come and, and, and find me and people who think like this is I'm also on the board of an organization called the Institute for Economic Studies Europe. Uh, and we put on a summer university every year in Aix-en-Provence. And that's another, another way is by bringing together people who feel like they're in, I don't want to say a safe space, but in a place where they are surrounded by people who are open and receptive to the ideas of liberalism and, uh, and a community of, of optimistic people certainly helps. And I think it's important that we create those networks. You do it here at uh, UFM. Uh, we're trying to do it in X. And, uh, and it's also to be able to, um, and to find role models for young uh, wannabe or liberty curious uh, young people, that they can, they can reach out to, um, to other people who are a little further along in their lives uh, to provide feedback and maybe help them find opportunities. Kerry, thank you very much for sharing these experiences with us. And thank you too.